and lunar rocks contain small grains of metallic iron, which is extremely susceptible to oxidation. If these rocks had been exposed to the Earth's atmosphere, all that iron would have turned to rust, or ferric oxide, which is also completely absent in NASA's moon rocks. I'm not sure all geologists would agree. On page 58 of their book, Mason and Melson state, Some authors have reported the presence of ferric iron, whereas most indicate that it is totally absent. I guess Webb falls in the latter category. His claim that there is no ferric iron in the Apollo samples likely comes from, again, Randy Kuratev's website. In Earth rocks, iron occurs in both the 2 plus and 3 plus oxidation states. On the Moon, iron occurs in the 0, metal, and 2 plus oxidation states. Although in lunar igneous rocks, almost all of the iron is of the 2 plus oxidation state, in olivine, pyroxene, and ilmenite. Most lunar geologists say that whilst the moon rocks have minerals and chemistry very similar to that of Earth rocks, the iron they contain is Fe2+, or ferrous iron, not Fe3+, ferric iron. I won't waste valuable time talking about oxidation states, but what this essentially means is that these two different phases of iron have transferred two and three of their electrons respectively in order to bond with a non-metal, such as oxygen. Now the Apollo samples also contain metallic iron. Metallic iron, unlike its oxidized brothers, is iron that has not transferred any of its electrons to a non-metal, and so it remains in the oxidation state of Fe0. Larry Taylor of the University of Tennessee told us the same thing as Kuratev in personal communication. Although the majority of the minerals in lunar rocks are similar to those on Earth, there are several differences that may seem trivial to a non-petrologist, but are important. There is no ferric iron in the minerals, only ferrous iron. Therefore, even though the pyroxenes and olivines and plagioclases on Earth may have ferric iron components, those on the Moon do not. Furthermore, whereas the accessory minerals of ilmenite and chromite and oval spinel on Earth always contain ferric iron, those on the Moon do not. This is the same bloke who in 1973 reported that the Apollo 16 breccia sample 66095 was rusted inside and out. The rust in question was identified as hematite, magnetite, and goethite. But along with Bell and Mao of the Carnegie Institute of Washington, Taylor attributed this rust to terrestrial contamination. Although Friedman and his team concluded that the rock had been rusting in situ. And we already saw Graham Ryder's claim of no ferric iron. Meanwhile, searching for geologists who do say there is ferric iron in the rocks, Previously we learned that Ramdor and El Gorzi found that the lunar rocks do contain hematite, a form of the Fe203 that Webb claims is absent in the samples. Hematite occurs as fine lamella within a few ilmenite grains in the shocked breccias. The optical identification of hematite was confirmed by microphobe analyses. Jed Webb and his team also reported on finding hematite. They found it in the Apollo 11 soil samples. Several free opaque or half opaque minerals were found. Ilmenite, sulfides, metallic iron, hematite, and goethite. And the aforementioned Gay, Bancroft and Brown put the magnetite content of lunar rocks at 0.2% by weight. Magnetite is an oxide of ferrous and a ferric iron. Agrell and his team also reported on finding ferric iron, albeit in very small trace amounts. But other researchers have reported on even higher contents in the Apollo samples. For evidence of such, one needs look no further than the third Lunar Science Conference in 1972. At that conference, Sherman and Hefner of the University of Chicago presented a study titled On the Amount of Ferric Iron in Plagioclases from Lunar Igneous Rocks. They found ferric iron in Apollo samples 10044, 12021, 14053, 14310, and 15415 better known as the Genesis Rock.
on page 619 of their paper, the authors had this to say about the latter three. In addition, a significant contribution of ferric iron to the spectrum was indicated, and the ratio of ferric iron to total iron was estimated to be between 0.02 and 0.1. No wonder Webb wanted us to believe that there was no magnetite or hematite in the Apollo samples. The alleged absence of ferric iron was used by Graham Ryder as evidence for the lunar samples being easily distinguishable from rocks on Earth. And yet, these rocks do contain ferric iron. Hmm, how do you suppose that ferric iron managed to get into the Apollo samples if they were not exposed to the atmosphere? Another thing I find interesting about the research by Sherman and Hefner is that they compared their lunar samples to terrestrial rocks. Spectra of plagioclase from a Lake Superior anorthosite, Duluth Gabbro complex, and of plagioclase from the Key Lava Flow, Hawaii, also were studied. These spectra are complicated by the superimposition of strong ferric iron peaks in addition to the ferrous iron patterns. The resonant absorption effect was too low to allow analysis of the complex spectra in detail. But the significant increase of the ratio ferric iron to ferrous iron compared to the Stillwater plagioclase is obvious in these spectra. Two samples of the Stillwater plagioclase were heated at 1000 and 1123 degrees Celsius in evacuated quartz tubes for two days and successfully measured at room temperature. After the heat treatment, the spectra were significantly different and showed remarkable similarity to the plagioclase spectra of lunar basalts. For proof of such, here is their chart plotting the ferric iron to total iron ratio, total iron being ferrous iron and ferric iron combined. The Stillwater anorthosite had a ferric iron to total iron ratio of 0.25 to 3. After being heated to 1000 degrees Celsius, it showed a ratio of 0.25 to 2. And after being heated to 1123 degrees Celsius, the ratio changed to 0.18 to 3. This is particularly close to the ferric iron to total iron ratios for Apollo 12 and 14 rocks. What do you suppose that NASA gave terrestrial rocks the same heat treatment before passing them off as lunar samples? And what a coincidence that in the Stillwater mines, the same place where Schumann and Hefner got their terrestrial anorthosite, rocks have been found that are similar in composition and mineralogy to moon rocks. So similar, in fact, that NASA has converted them to lunar regolith simulants. The piles of waste rock from the Stillwater mine look like ordinary rocks, but like the rare platinum group metals found in the underground mine near here, the mine's geology also contains rocks with an unusual combination of minerals and chemistry that resembles lunar dirt. This week, scientists from NASA and the U.S. Geological Survey collected rock samples for processing into a fine gray powder that is very similar to moon dirt. NASA plans to use the simulated moon dirt to test new technology that would be used in a permanent lunar station. A certain Wikipedia vandal tries to downplay the amount of ferric iron in the Apollo samples by claiming it was found in only one breccia sample. This is false. Sherman and Hefner identified five Apollo samples containing ferric iron, and these samples in question were either basalts or anorthosites, not breccias. Perhaps he's referring to Apollo 16 breccia sample 66095. As we discussed back in episode 1, this rock has been dubbed as Rusty Rock because the rust has penetrated the rock and the oxidation is easily visible to the naked eye. As to what caused this rust is open to debate. Samuel Epstein and Hugh Taylor together concluded that terrestrial water had contaminated the rock and caused this rusting, but Friedman and his team believed the rock had been rusting prior to its retrieval by the Apollo 16 astronauts. The lunar sample compendium also cast doubt on the contamination excuse. It is possible that anhydrous metal salts, chlorides, 
in 66095 combined with the moisture in the lunar module, command module, tropical Pacific and or individual terrestrial laboratory, yielding terrestrial-like hydrogen and oxygen isotopic signatures. However, it is difficult to see how moisture penetrated into the sample to rust the interior metal grains. Incidentally, this paperwork also refers to the grains of metallic iron that Webb refers to, and contrary to what he claimed, these metallic grains are indeed rusted. Although numerous Apollo 16 rocks exhibit some rust around metallic iron grains, 66095 is unusual in that it has abundant evidence of alteration. Alteration is found in the interior as well as on the surface. In thin section, the thin gray margins to metallic iron grains indicates rusting in situ. The brown stain extends into the silicate surrounding the iron grains. It is difficult to believe that this is the result of terrestrial alteration. Now this paperwork doesn't specify which Apollo 16 samples contain these rusty metallic grains. But whilst browsing through the Lunar Sample Compendium, I learned that Breccia sample 67455 is one such example. So much for ferric iron being found in only one breccia sample. In the paperwork for sample 67455, we are told... Metallic iron with rust and sphalerite was reported by Taylor's team and Algorases in 1973. Hunter and Taylor in 1981 also reported rust was abundant in 67455. The metallic iron has high cobalt content and does not appear to be of meteoritic origin. Reading through the bibliography, I followed the cookie crumb trail back to Robert Hunter and Larry Taylor's paper presented at the 12th Lunar and Planetary Science Conference in 1981, and I learned that 67455 and 66095 are not the only Apollo 16 samples with abundant rust. On page 255 of this paper, Hunter and Taylor present this huge table listing 148 different rocks from Apollo 16. Their rust contents are divided into four different categories, abundant, present, trace, and absent. In total, a whopping 82 of these rocks contained ferric iron. 32 of them only contained trace amounts. 30 had ferric iron present, and another 20 had abundant ferric iron. Interestingly, one sample listed as abundant is 61016, better known to the public as Big Muley. This very sample has frequently been cited by propagandists as evidence for Apollo. And yet, their favorite rock shows evidence of alteration by our atmosphere, as do many, many other samples. And this list is just for Apollo 16. Hunter and Taylor bluntly summarize their findings with... The majority of Apollo 16 rocks contain rust and or schreibersite establishing the pervasiveness of volatile elements throughout the highland rocks. Personally, I found it rather shocking that Larry Taylor would present such a report at the 12th Lunar and Planetary Science Conference and then tell us that ferric iron is totally absent in the samples. Then again, he and Hunter later specify in the said report that they believe the rust is, wait for it, a terrestrial contaminant. In the presence of chlorine, native iron nickel is unstable reacting to form lorencite. This phase, stable in the anhydrous low fraction of oxygen lunar environment, is highly deliquescent. It undergoes rapid oxyhydration to form akeganeite when exposed to contamination from terrestrial water vapor. Most, if not all, akeganeite in the lunar samples has been formed by post-lunar processes. Its presence is a manifestation of chlorine mobility within the lunar environment. This statement about lorencite converting to acaganinite within the atmosphere had previously been used by Taylor's lab partners Bell and Mao. During the 4th Lunar Science Conference, they reported that ferric iron was found in the plagioclase of sample 66095 and various Apollo 16 soils they analysed. They also stated that a Dr. R. Weeks told them that he found the same thing in Apollo 15 basalt sample 15475. 
The problems in interpreting the chemistry of Apollo 16 and North Acidic rocks and soil are caused, in part, by the occurrence of oxidation and hydration products, namely rust, or goethitic alteration. It is important to determine the degree of pervasiveness of the alteration and, of course, its cause. The latter has been attributed by us to atmospheric reaction of the meteoritic mineral Laurencite in rock 66095, and therefore it is useful to compare 66095 feldspar with those of Apollo 16 soils and an Apollo 15 rock 15475 reported to contain ferric iron.